Hey there guys, this is Master DK, and uh, I decided to do something uh, not entirely different as much as just something I haven't done in a long time, and that's do a completely unscripted video um, just talking about what's on my mind and just interacting with my audience on a new level than I usually would, which is basically either being like extremely loose and goofy in like live streams or you know following a script <laughs> and everything else that that I do yeah I thought I thought I would just uh, open up for once on this channel really look back at all my uh, at all the things that I've done this year yeah this is a year in review um, I feel like I can like bring something like unique to the whole year in review thing because what I've noticed with a lot of YouTubers who do year in reviews, they focus on only certain aspects of the year, like their channel growth or like something, a solitary situation or like a couple of situations going on in their lives. I wanted to try my best to cover everything that happened this year. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to remember everything because 365 days are hard to remember. <laughs> Especially since, um, in my adult life, days just blend together and it's kind of scary and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that, um, later on in this recording. So yeah, I, I'm basically going to, uh, go over the highlights, the different aspects of my life and, like, how they played out this year. If I feel like these aspects went well, um, compared to other years and just, you know, just get it all off my chest so I can sail on into the new year and hopefully improve in ways that I need to and or to keep things the same or do less of something. First of all, I wanted to talk about this year in general, how I feel about it, how I feel about 2018. And I'm not talking about events nationally or around the world. I'm not going to get into that because researching current events make my head hurt mostly because it's just crazy <laughs> but um I will say this this year is probably I wouldn't say it's my most accomplished year of my life that um that's a stretch but as far as me being out of high school I would say this is so far the year that I feel the most accomplished in because uh, last year, I, I was trying to um, accomplish things, and they didn't always work out. 2016, there was literally nothing going on. <laughs> because, well, I had to take a year off, because um, I had to take a year off from college, like, right after I started. In a way, I needed it, because, you know, I needed to get my bearings back. The stress of high school was um, clinging to me. And um, I just needed to take a year off, take up a part-time job, and just, you know, figure out where I'm going from from that point. Like, in a way, I needed it, but in another way, it just put me in a bad spot. And a spot where I didn't feel like I was doing anything, because I wasn't doing anything. Not, not a lot, anyway. Not enough to, you know, do anything with my life. <clears throat> I will say I went about it um, the entirely wrong way. I uh, did things I wasn't proud of in 2016. I'm not talking about crimes or anything like that. I'm talking about like just how I was, my attitude, my behavior. It was something that I hate looking back on because it wasn't who I wanted to be. And I just, I didn't want to put others through that. I, I felt like I was pushing people away when... They were trying to help me. I mean, I, I struggle with that a lot. Um, just not fully trusting um, people around me who genuinely want to help me. I always get this, you know, feeling that I shouldn't get too close to people and fear of getting hurt. And that's, that's something a lot of people go through. And um, it's especially a thing with me because of my syndrome, my, uh, my social anxiety, all the things that you know, try to hold me back, but I, I'm able to come out on top against. 
And uh, I feel like, you know, that was partly to blame. I feel like something else to blame was basically just, you know, not knowing who I wanted to be. And I tried to be like, you know, someone I wasn't to try and cover up the fact that I was, that I felt like no one. But who I was, you know, taking on the role of in life, it wasn't, it wasn't good. My friends, my family, they helped me um, um, bounce back from it. And uh, I couldn't be more thankful for them because they, they, they really do want to help me and they do whatever they can. And I realized in the end, it was up to me. It was up to me to realize that they were, that they were doing the best they can. Because at first you think, you know, the best they can do, it's not enough, you know, but like, then you realize they're doing the best they can. And maybe that is enough, you know, once, once you realize that I'm going to be a little louder for you. <laughs> once you realize that the recovery pro process is um, a lot better. And, um, and uh, I still have my bouts, you know, I've always had my bouts, you know, for, for quite some time. I, not even just like after high school ended. It was it was during high school as well where I would just have these bouts of depression and anxiety and you know, you just wake up one morning and just don't know why. Why you even bothered doing that. Like something as simple as waking up to start the day, you just question it, you know? And uh it's it's a really scary it's a really scary thing to experience too, because you're thinking, like, I should be feeling good today I have so much going for me today I have things that I can do to make the most of it but I just I can't get into I I can't care less <laughs> but um you know that's that's um an issue that once again with the help of people in my life I can I can overcome and just you know believing in myself thinking about my future what what I want in life and really just trying my best to to strive for it and i feel like that's the best you can do in that situation i feel like it's helped me a great deal um as far as that let's talk about college <laughs> boring old college i mean there were some fun things about college but you know it's it's the usual um boring stuff you would you would see especially with the degree I'm going for, computer programming. This year, um, I passed two different classes, I believe. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> I think I passed about maybe three or four. Once again, the years kind of blend together sometimes, especially with college. I remember I passed performance in business or some, something like this. Uh, technician performance. Yeah, that was it. And uh, I passed networking which I failed at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah, and I passed Web, web Foundations. That was an, another one that I had to retake. I managed to pass that, and I, feel, I felt really good about that one. I feel the best about passing Network, which I just did recently, and that class is so fucking hard, I cannot even describe how stressful that class made me. Both tries, but I think I had the advantage um, in the second uh, attempt because it was an online class and I do much better with online classes. Uh, most people would disagree because their defense would be, well, if you're taking one in like an actual classroom, you get to meet the teacher, you get to have um, a stronger connection with both the teacher and your classmates. To me, I work better from home. <laughs> once once again, um, socially, I'm just, you know, out of it a lot of times and, uh, have trouble building up the confidence to uh, work in an, in a school-like environment. And I feel like online classes um, help me a great deal. So I, I'm, uh, I'm hoping that a majority of the courses I'm going to, going to be taking in the future are going to be online so I can just, you know, get this associate's degree and just be done with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, ha I have only four more classes to, to go after this. Um, the next one starts up uh, in just about a couple weeks, in fact. You know, that's kind of scary. You know, it's really close. But at the same time, I just really want to get this done as soon as possible to get on with my life because there's 
so many great things, you know, waiting for me out there. And I just need to get through this, uh, you know, obstacle course before I get to the finish line. Like I said on Twitter, I'm hoping that near the beginning of 2020, I'm hoping that's going going to be the um, final year of, of, of my uh, college uh, education and I can finally um, apply for a uh, high-paying job so I can really uh, get the ball rolling here. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, go- that's what's going on with college. Um, I've been passing with C's a lot. I don't have a problem with that because, you know, some of these classes are hard. Some I had to retake. And if it's if, if it's passing grade, you know, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to, you know, be one of those <laughs> persistent people, you know, pushing for those B's and A's just for the satisfaction of getting B's and A's. I mean, there's some, you know, occupations that require you to have the highest of highest of uh, scores, but uh, not the ones I'm I'm looking to do. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. You know, my family. Yes, my family. Um, I feel like I have grown a much deeper connection with my overall family. Um, earlier this year, I decided to bring my uh, Facebook account to life. <laughs> I, I guess you could say. It was, it was it, It's a personal Facebook account. My sister made it back in 2010, I believe. And I never used it until now and uh, I kind of feel bad about that but not really because I was dealing with stress as far as you know uh, grade school went and um, when I became um, very interactive online I had already put an identity out there with my uh, YouTube persona and everything and I didn't want to uh, I didn't want people a bunch of people didn't you know connect the dots with my personal life and my YouTube persona I, I, I didn't want those things to connect. I was very anxious about um, going into my Facebook account to interact. But when I finally built up the courage to do so, um, it took a lot of strength. Believe me, it was um, I was sort of panicking when I was, you know, typing my first wall of text <laughs> for, for my first Facebook post. I found that after I did that, everything just went by so smoothly after that. I interacted more with family. My family is all over Facebook. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Given the size of my family, I expected at least like half of them to be online, half of them to not be interactive on social media at all. A majority of my family is interactive on Facebook. And uh, that can get kind of crazy. Like um, I would have a relative that I haven't talked to in literally a year just you know <laughs> interacting with me constantly on Facebook and it's it, that's that's um pretty funny but also really nice because I get to talk to somebody that I've I haven't talked to in a long time I can you know reestablish a uh, family relationship with them and just really you know build that up you know I made you know a bunch of funny posts I would review movies give my thoughts on movies um I would share some of the stuff that I created. I try to um, share it exclusively with, exclusively with my friends because if I start putting out all my covers <laughs> onto my personal Facebook account, people are going to catch on that this personal Facebook account and Master DK are the same guy. <laughs> and that is terrifying to me. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to keep them apart as much as I possibly can. And if that means not letting my family share my videos, I'm fine with that. <laughs> my, my Facebook is primarily for family and real life friend interactions. And that's how I plan to keep it. But uh, I feel like thanks to my Facebook interactions and thanks to me showing up at more family events, I feel like I'm reestablishing a relationship with family members that I never thought I would and that's really exciting and like I never thought that that would become a thing but I guess once you grow into an adult you start to um, think of your family members as no longer like you know authority figures or just friends to hang out with on weekends and stuff like that you you see them as 
you know, people you genuinely care about and people who genuinely care about you, you really, your eyes really open to like how close they are to you. And I feel like that's very important. So remember kids, you may hate your family right now, but I guarantee you when you become an adult, your views are going to change. <laughs> I mean, unless your family is like horrible, horrible people in general, then, you know, probably you should probably distance yourself. But if it's just like you're, you're you know, just regular teen angst, your family trying to build a relationship with you, but you keep pushing them away. I guarantee you that in your adult life, there will come, you know, situations where you're going to have to rectify all of that and really build, rebuild a relationship with them because it's very important that you do so. Um, my friends, um, the thing about my friends is, is that we've had a very, um, what's the word, a uh, rather typical pattern of a friendship. You know, we do the things that you would associate with, you know, just, you know, there's like a constant pattern with um, how you interact. It's like you go over to this friend's house, you play a bunch of video games with them, you watch a movie or two, you share online videos with each other, then you leave. And uh, I feel like that's <laughs> how my friendships have mostly been. It's It's just been, you know, a constant pattern of that. And as much as... There's no real issue with that. I mean, if that's how you function as as friends, that's totally fine. But I felt like I needed something like a little bit more when it came to, you know, how I interact with my friends. And I feel like this year I was able to I was able to do that. I was able to make more of my friendships. We don't just talk about, you know, things that, you know, interest us anymore. We we we're more honest with each other. We're more open with each other. Whatever is on our minds, we let it out. And uh, I feel like um, that built a much stronger friendship than before. Um, I no longer feel like I have to hide a bunch of shit from my friends because there's no need to. Because you can trust each other. The thing is, um, the trust between friends can you know, grow stronger and stronger. But you might not fully realize that yet. Because you're too busy, you know, trying to keep the status quo and your friendship going to where you don't realize it until later on in life where you mature more and you realize, wow, our friendship is actually very strong. Why, why haven't we, you know, take, taken full advantage of this, you know? And uh, that's also very important um, that you realize how strong the bond is so you can work with it and this year I feel like it improved the most and I'm very happy about that and uh, next <laughs> I feel like I talk about this too much but I'm going to anyways because it's just become such a big part of my life that I it's impossible not to my relationship um, many of you uh, know who I am dating because I have stated so several times in the past I don't feel like I need to to repeat myself with that it is another online creator that I have known for the past three years. It, three years. That's, that's crazy. Our relationship is pretty much the same as it's been for, I say, the past couple of years now. and But in a much stronger sense than before. Our um, connection, you know, grows stronger every day, I feel. And, uh, you know, we're able to talk things out. We're able to be personal with each other. We're there for each other as much as we possibly can. You can never hope to be the perfect, you know, significant other to your significant other. <laughs> but um, you can be the best you can be. And uh, that's what I try to be for her. And that's what she tries to be for me. And, you know, we, we have our issues. I don't believe there's a single relationship out there that does not have issues embedded. They're going to come up. They're going to cause, you know, harsh words towards each other. They're going to cause a divide. Um, sometimes, you know, the divide becomes permanent and you can never hope to mend it. But uh, the fact that we can mend it, the fact that we have fixed the issues that we've had is just a, a sign that we're, we work so well together. And it really paints a good future for her and I because... 
because like who knows what other obstacles we can overcome in our relationship and the thought of that is just it just really puts me in a uh, positive mindset um, when it comes to you know where we are right now and where we're going to be and uh, I hope that it just keeps getting stronger and I'm going to you know really make sure it does as much as I can and uh, I, I know that she'll do the same because you know we care about each other and we we want each other to be happy and uh, we'll do whatever it takes um, to make this work and uh, so far it's been working for three years so I have to so um <laughs> we're we're um, definitely, you know, going places um, together. And uh, we didn't get to do um, anything, like, really special this year. I guess there was just so much going on in both our lives. We just missed out on a bunch of things with, that we could have done together. But uh, this upcoming year, we plan on doing a lot more things together. And some things you're going to be able to see because we're – we're putting ourselves out there. We're really, we're going to try and um, do more collaborative works together, not just on YouTube. We're, we're planning on, you know, doing all kinds of different stuff. I'm not going to give anything away, but it's going to be great. I, I'm really excited. And um, I know she's excited too. She's, you know, told me many times how excited she is about doing these things and, I'm going to support her as much as I can because most of the stuff for her ideas. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that. All right. Uh, enough about my, um, you know, personal life. Let's talk about you guys. Let's talk about <laughs> everybody I've interacted with online. Well, for one, only a couple people blocked me this year. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Last year, there was like a handful of people who blocked me over both my thoughts and situations that I have taken part in that I had to like take sides in. Last year, it was just ridiculous. Like someone blocked me because I called them out for bullying. Other people blocked me because they supported the person who was bullying <laughs> and they just didn't want to talk to me about it. They didn't want to find common ground. They just like, fuck you and just blocked me. But I don't hold a grudge against them. I feel like holding a grudge against them would would probably show <laughs> down the road um, with how I behave online. But my online interactions this year, um, there's been a lot more. I will say that. I've made more online friends than before. Um, people who I've interacted with who are very nice and very respectful. And uh, I really enjoy interacting with anybody who's like that. Didn't run into as many, you know, pricks, which uh, I feel like is a step up <laughs> from last year because there was a lot of them last year. Man, my interactions online pretty much have stayed the same. Um, there's been, you know, ups and downs as far as, you know, um, how often I interact. I get to interact with people, but uh, I met some really good friends. I've helped you know, other YouTubers. I've helped uh, my best friend, one of my best friends in real life who um, has his own YouTube channel. I've, I helped a couple narrators. Oh, I was interviewed by uh, an author on her website, Augie Peterson. You, um, you might know her. I did a story of hers um, earlier this year. It was a friendly neighbor. Um, I'll link that down below for you guys. And um, she was so impressed with the narration and like a couple weeks after she um, offered to interview me and my mind was just already blown just by someone asking to interview me because usually I have to go to somebody to request an interview. Yeah, someone came to me for an interview, which never happens. And it, it was really exciting. And uh, I tried to make the most out of the interview and I feel like I did a good job on my part. Then... To take it up a notch, uh, I I was talked about in her podcast series, and that was the moment where I I had to question if this was real, <laughs> because this 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 shit doesn't happen. No nobody talks about me on podcasts. What is this? But um yeah that that happened, and 
I'm really glad it happened. It was definitely one of my uh, year's highlights, I, I have to say. But yeah, overall, my online interactions have stayed the same. Um, I stated um, earlier this year, rather bluntly, might I add. <laughs> I don't view online relationships, online friendships, the same as I would, the same as I view, like, actual friendships. Because I feel like if you're friends with someone strictly online, it's harder to establish a real genuine connection because at the end of the day it's just you talking to someone you've never met before you only get like an excerpt of what their life is like what kind of people they are for all you know people could be lying <laughs> which uh has happened before to me um a couple of times where i thought someone was one way and but um this year i've been much more careful in that regard. I've been trying to keep it at a good medium. I, I always make sure that I'm friendly and respectful to people around me um, online, in, in the online world. I try to be supportive to people, um, encur encouraging, inspiring, showing a genuine you know, care and respect. But at the same time, I try not to get too involved personally with them. And that was kind of an issue I had around the beginning of my YouTube career. When I had, I would always request to, you know, be close friends with people that I worked with. And eventually they saw this as a window for um, opening up personally to me. And I would do the same. And things really took a turn with that. And I had to get out of that before it got any worse. The interactions I've had at the beginning of my YouTube uh, channel timeline, I'm not proud of at all because I got way too personal with people or got too much into their business. I, I, got, I got like pulled in, you know, and uh, had a lot of interactions that um, I feel like might come back to bite me and I hope they don't. <laughs> but um, yeah, because you, you can't do that with people you only know online. You have to establish a, a more genuine connection with them or else it's going to take a turn for the worst and you might find yourself stuck. So definitely don't do that. You got to be careful online. I feel like, um, on the other hand, um, it makes people think that I am trying intentionally to distance myself because I... I've just, you know, not completely honest with how supportive I am. And like I come off as someone who doesn't want anything to do with with people, and it's not that. It's just, you know, some people who I, you know, have friendly interactions with online can be very personalized, and I don't want to, you know, get stuck in that again. And in the process, I try to um not get too close to them. I, I still, you know, maintain my casual, friendly acquaintance relationship with them. But at the same time, I try to avoid any, you know, rabbit holes um, as far as that goes. So so that's that's where I stand on that. But um, overall, my online, my online interactions this year have been pretty good for the most part. Like I said, only a couple of people blocked me. Score. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was um, one very big author who started a random argument with me over nothing and then blocked me. And then there was a narrator who misinterpreted what I said and before I could explain it to him, I'm blocked. Here's, here's my thing about blocking people online. I thought blocking was a way to avoid harassment or dangerous behavior um, from other people online. They're used for, like, very serious situations. Like, they used to be used for, like, very serious situations where you are, like, being, you know, harassed or, you know, um, just abused online. And the only solution was to block them, right? Now it's because people disagree with you. People mistake things that you say. And I, I, how does that warrant a block? It might warrant an unfollow, you know, if you don't want to see my tweets anymore where I state views that you don't agree with, you can unfollow me, then you don't have to worry about me. You can mute me. There's a mute option on Twitter where you can just silence my tweets. But then 
blocking people. It's basically silencing them and just pushing them away from you. You can't see their tweets anymore. So for all you know, they could be talking shit. <laughs> it feels unnecessary and dramatic. And I try to avoid doing that to people. The only reason I've ever blocked people is because they've shown very threatening and harassing behavior. They get involved in a lot of drama and have a history of pulling people into drama who have nothing to do with it for the sake of getting support for their drama. Um, I've had to block a couple of those because I just did not want to have to put up with them in the future. And then, uh, well, people who have, you know, completely shown contempt and hatred towards me that uh, I feel would try everything in their power to uh, destroy my image. There have been people like that. I'm not, you know, over-exaggerating. That was an actual thing at one point, and I had to block them. So, like, I block people because of things that are actually serious, not something stupid, like, you're such a jerk. Why would you say th this thing about something I support? Blah, blah, blah. Block. No. I'm not going to do that to people, because that's... That, that puts me in a bad light. And people can, you know, turn their backs to people who do that as much as possible, um, as much as they want. Like, you can turn your backs all you want. It will come back to bite them in the ass. Because, because that's just how the internet works. That's how life works. It's, it's going to catch up to you. Your behavior online, your treatment of other people, it's going to come back and rip you a new one. So... Keep that in mind when you treat people like crap. It's going to come back around. It It's just the way of life. And I acknowledge that things that I did in the past, they're going to come back around to get me. But I'm either going to try and, you know, fix the issue uh, as quickly as possible or just make my bed with it and try my very best to move on. And finally, let's talk about my channel. How, how do I feel I have improved this year as far as my channel's content. I feel like I've done a lot better um, this year. There's a very, very, very little amount of videos that I'm not proud of this year. And <laughs> that's saying a lot because half of the videos I did in 2017 I wasn't proud of. And about 90% of the videos I did in 2016 I was not proud of. But this year, there's a very small percentage of videos that I'm not proud of that I end up, you know, privatizing. I plan on redoing. But a majority of the videos I made this year, I am genuinely proud of. And uh, I feel like it's because I've improved in a lot of areas. Like with my narrating, I'm putting a lot more emotion into my readings because I feel like it's a much respectful way to go about narrating. Because... At the very beginning, I was, of course, monotonous because, you know, I wasn't putting that much effort into something that I claimed to have a passion for. And I feel like if I was really going to, you know, express my passion, I should do it in a way that requires more effort. But then um, that resulted in using the same inflections throughout each narration, and it got very repetitive very fast, and I, I didn't like those either. But this year, I, I tried to... Um, get the tones just right for each story that I do. I, I try not to be too repetitive with how I tell the stories. Uh, I feel like that hurts a lot of, that can hurt a lot of narrators' channels if they just constantly um, become re repetitive with their narrations. I feel like they'll die out faster if, if, if that's the case. I feel like they need to like change things up with just the style of their narrating because like most of the time narrators will like try to jump onto different trends to, you know, stay in the spot that they're in. But that can also backfire. I think the best way to, to go about it is to just, you know, change up how you do things overall and not just, you know, what you do. Change how you do it. I feel like that's um, a lot more effective. I feel like I've done that with my channel's content. My covers have vastly improved. Um... I feel like this microphone might be uh, the thing to thank for that. But um, I've also been, you know, more mindful of my audio mixing, my volume levels. Because I've had, I've had troubles with that in the past. I feel like I um, do a much better job with that now. My countdown videos, they've been very far and few between. I only made like a few this year. God, my throat is starting to, to hurt. 
I feel like I um, put my own personal flavor into the countdown videos nowadays. I feel more proud of them. I feel like I'm not just, you know, researching a bunch of shit and putting it into a video. I feel like I am showing genuine interest as I do them. And uh, that's very important. When making any YouTube video in general, show that you are just as interested as your audience. Because otherwise, you know, it's not going to come off as genuine. It's going to come off as you trying to gain something from the content that you make, you know. It's like someone who takes up a job as a teacher. And every waking hour of the school day, they are miserable and they let it show. It's like, why did you take up the job? Did you just want the money? You have to keep your audience's interest, but you also have to keep your own interest. I feel like that's very important in um, content creating. And um, as you all know, <laughs> early August, I got myself a game cap and I have been just streaming games nonstop. And uh, I keep reassuring myself and others that this this is not taking over my channel's content. Relax, guys. I'm not becoming a full-fledged Let's Play channel. But here's the thing. They're going to <laughs> occur just about every week. It's something that can't be helped. I just keep coming back to it because, well, one, they're so easy to make. And two, they're fun to make. And, uh... And honestly, it's the only way I even play video games anymore. <laughs> because before this, I didn't play video games very often. Because, like, other things, you know, take over my life to where I just can't play, sit down and play a video game anymore. I feel like this is a good way to keep my love of video games alive. Alive and active. So, uh, I feel like streaming my games is a great way to do that. Just overall, t this year has been a very good year. I feel like I got so much done. I feel like I I'm in a much better mindset than I was in the last couple of years. 2016, I was in the most horrible of mindsets. I felt like I was going nowhere. I didn't know who I wanted to be. And I just felt completely empty. Um, 2017 was the same, except I was getting more stuff done. <laughs> but this year, this year overall has just been a vast improvement over the last two. I just, I feel like I'm getting back to what makes me happy. I'm getting to the root of my problems and fixing them. I feel like I'm reestablishing a feeling that I haven't felt in the last few years. And I just feel great about it. You know, there's still those days where you just, w where I just, you know, wake up in the morning, have no idea what the hell I'm doing in life and if it's even worth it. And it's unavoidable. It's going to you know, come up and it's going to make things very complicated. There might be days that I have off from work and college where I just feel like sitting around watching TV. And I have done that. There was, there were days where I just completely shut down and get nothing done during the day. And, uh, those days are rough, but, uh, I usually recover the next day and I'm able to get a bunch more stuff, stuff done. And, you know, I feel great again. And uh, I feel like as long as um, I keep setting goals for myself, as long as I keep thinking about my future and what I want, the more I'm going to strive to get it, the more I'm going to feel fulfilled and just overall happy with what I'm doing. And uh, I am right now very happy with what I'm doing and I'm going to keep doing it for myself and you guys. I, I just want to restate how thankful I am for you guys. Like, I don't feel like I have, like, a friend or family relationship with you guys. I feel like um, my relationship with you guys is very unique, very special. It's, it's special in a way where I feel like I can, we're on the same level online, and uh, it's a really great feeling. So, uh, I'm, I'm really thankful for that. So, um, thank you guys for listening to all this. This, this is probably going to be a very long video, even edited down, but you know what? I feel good about getting all this stuff off my chest. I'm ready for 2019. Bring it. Uh, it's going to be hell. But you know what? It's going to be a good hell. I'm going to make the most out of this hell. So, thank you guys. Stay your awesome selves always. I'll see you in 2019.